<clears throat> ORM or operational risk management is a generic term for a system used to evaluate risk before uh, doing a task or a mission. Uh, they're generally customized for each agency, but they are broadly used um, throughout military aviation and uh, search and rescue, the Coast Guard, uh, other agencies that do discrete missions or tasks that have some danger involved. Uh, there's a system in each of those agencies to evaluate that risk before proceeding. Uh, the result is usually a numerical score, and that score um, results in one of three uh, outcomes the first is that it's a really good score there's low risk and the the mission goes ahead or the task goes ahead uh, the second is that there's a medium score that uh, entails some subs sub substantial risk and that requires higher level approval before the the task or mission goes ahead and then the third is that the risk is just through the roof a very high score and uh, for that re that's our reason for not going ahead um, that happens in search and rescue. Um, one example is a call, uh, and we, we actually had one last year, uh, during a windstorm, during a fairly strong wind event that was affecting um, the area of the county where the, the call was, was happening. Our, our route to it would have been through some um, substantial timber, and the risk was uh, judged too extreme, and we didn't go ahead. SARGAR is a search and rescue simplified field expedient version of ORM, Operational Risk Management. Um, I'm not sure, honestly, who developed it at, in its current form, but it seems to have roots in what the Coast Guard does. So, And SARGAR means search and rescue green, amber, red. It's a color-coded system. And yes, it's all subjective. Uh, even the scored numerically uh, scored systems, they're all subjective as well. Um, the, there might be pieces of it where you get into weather, uh, wind conditions, where there's uh, actual objective scores for different conditions. But for the most part, uh, risk evaluation is subjective. <clears throat> it's still structured, though. It uh, walks us through certain categories of risk, encourages us to communicate about those categories of risk, to identify things that may be risky, and to talk about ways we can mit mitigate or, or uh, you know, reduce the, the uh, risk of those uh, categories. It empowers everyone on the team to be a part of that risk evaluation, and uh, you as SAR volunteers should feel that. Um, sh should feel that you are empowered to be a part of the, the team's evaluation of its risk. You do not just blindly go out and say, uh, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be fine because someone told me to go do this. Um, you should be an active participant in evaluating the risk, your own risk and the team's risk, and speaking up about your opinions about each of the categories evaluated. Uh, final point there is it provides a basis for individuals and teams to exercise what is both a right and a responsibility to refuse assignments. So there is such a thing as refusing an assignment because of risk. And uh, the way that we communicate that we're refusing an assignment is to say that we've evaluated it through SARGAR. And here are the categories that, that show extreme risk, and it's just not uh, tenable for us to continue. Um, at least as directed, so we can. We'll get back to that later. What happens when we refuse an assignment? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, principles of SARGAR: Evaluate potential risk for all actions. Empower personnel to recognize and refuse risk. Uh, require supervisors to approve risk if it's in that moderate category. Um, to accept risk when the benefits warrant it. There are obviously times when, um, to that last point there, the risk versus reward is um, is uh, a calculation that we um, we use to, you know, we consider and we go ahead with something that's risky, uh, such as a tech rescue high angle operation. It's always not without risk, uh, risk of rockfall, risk of equipment failure, risk of uh, you know someone dropping someone. There's, there's high risk there, but reward, if we're, we're 
rescuing someone, uh, the reward could be high as well. So we do that analysis and and uh, move ahead or don't. The form for Sargar is pretty simple. It is this white box on the right side of the screen. And we have this printed onto um, laminated cards that if you didn't get one with your ID one or two with your ID badge, then you will. Um, they're out at Station 51 with our vehicles as well. So we can give you a couple anytime. Try to keep one with your badge and one in your backpack or something. So you'll always have one close at hand. Um, in reality, in the field, everyone doesn't need to have one. You could pass it around, but it's, uh, it's best if everyone can just pull out their card and go through these categories. So um, we'll get to the process for that in a minute. Um, but if you don't have the card, uh, there is an acronym, SAFETY, S-A-F-E. TI for supervision, assignment complexity, the fitness of the team, environment and hazards, the team, and whether it's improvised. Uh, let's get to the detail here for first how we do it, and then we'll talk about each of those categories next. So the process, <clears throat> excuse me, the process is to convene the team and discuss each of those six elements and uh, ideally we do this in a structured manner so from the least to the most experienced member share each element scar level it's a personal evaluation for that element of whether you're in the green the amber or the red uh you could just say the color real quick you could say i'm green 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 you know go around the circle um if it's an amber or red you might want to explain uh, brief it briefly say well i'm amber uh, personally right now because of uh we got called out at midnight and I went to bed at 11 and I haven't had any sleep. So you go around the circle and for each of those categories, describe it. And this is generally on a team level. So this would be the, the two people going up the trail on a hasty team or the four people or six people doing a, a grid search. Oops. For some reason, I screwed up this slide and the other ones aren't turning black. So let me just talk about them. Uh, number three there, any team member's red is a red for the team. Any team member's amber is an amber for the team. So the the highest, the most severe color become, for, for any one person becomes the team's color for that uh, category. So if everyone is green on sleep, but one person is red uh, or fitness or comfort with the task, the team becomes red for that, for that element. And then number four, the team works together or maybe with um, the, the command staff, works to mitigate the red and amber elements. So the red ones, you try to turn them amber or green. The amber ones, you try to turn them green. Now you can't go catch up on sleep, you know, and, and just immediately fix that to continue using that example. But some other elements can, can be modified. Uh, the team can be changed. The conditions, the assignment can be changed to mitigate those and bring them back into the green or at least the amber if uh number five if you're unable as a team to mitigate a red element the team leader consults with the higher authority okay so here are the elements number first one is supervision for the s and safety uh, so this goes with how qualified is the team leader are they able to uh, focus on the task and focus on comms and um, keeping you know their head up and being actively engaged in looking for safety issues or are they going to be heads down actively engaged in the task um, it's nothing bad about either of those options but uh, obviously in a more complex task a team leader that has their head up and is looking around and is just sort of acting in, in a command role on that team uh, can provide an additional margin of safety for the team uh, how about the supervision provided by the team, provided the team by command? So how well do you trust the people that you're working for? And uh, what does their experience seem to be? So this is really easy to answer when it's our Jefferson County Sheriff's Office deputies that we work with all the time um, that you will, as as the rest of us have, grow to trust and uh, know that they have our, our safety in mind and, and best interests in mind. Um, it's uh, more of a question, not not to, you know, question the uh, ability of any other law enforcement professionals, but there's definitely more of a question when we go outside the county and we're working for people we don't know. 
Uh, will there be adequate communication between the team and command? So uh, radios, are they going to work or are we being sent 10 miles up the trail or uh, an over a ridge where they will not work? <clears throat> Second element is the assignment complexity. So how crazy is what you're, what you're being tasked with? Uh, the time and resources required to conduct it. Um, so that can range from, again, two people just walking up a trail with their packs to 12 people performing a, a high angle tech rescue. The longer the exposure to hazards, the greater the risk. So a very short exposure crossing. Uh, so you're going up to Marmot Pass and you're crossing the avalanche fields up there. Uh, that can be managed. It can be short. Now, the rescue is an avalanche victim in the middle of one of those avalanche fields. That's a longer exposure and a greater risk. Um, the last one I won't speak to right now. <clears throat> Next element is fitness of the team. So whether this team is a good, in good shape for the task. So this, there's two team elements out of the six. Um, this one has to do with how you're feeling and how you're feeling about the assignment. So each person, really. Um, so it's the physical and mental state of the, the members, um, how long you've been working, uh, whether you were doing something else physically active prior to getting the call out and you're, and you're tired. Um, and then the separate consideration, especially for going to a recovery call, is the comfort level of each person on that team with, you know, the, the traumatic find of uh, somebody from an airplane wreck or something. So um, that is really the individual fitness. But then, as I said, it, it rolls up into the team. So if an individual is red, the team becomes red. This is one that you can uh, you can imagine how we would mitigate this. We can always swap people out. The E stands for environment and hazards, the, the fourth element here. So this is um, when you're going out, the weather, the terrain, um, if we're working on the, you know, the bottom of the bluff of Port Townsend, the tides, uh, the distance to travel, the Abbey danger, whether you're on private property or, or public land, anything related to the place and environment in which you are performing uh, the, the task or mission. So I said there were two team elements and, and this fifth one is the, the second team one. So this is not the individual fitness of uh, of each person on the team. This is the collective ability of the team to do the task. <clears throat> so I'll use the tech rescue example again. And uh, Hamp has spent his week, uh, I think he's finishing today, in a tech rescue class with the fire departments. Uh, so let's assume that we have a team composed of Hamp very qualified, fresh out of getting a certification for, for rope rescue. Uh, and then we have everyone else on this call, uh, except me. So everyone else is new and we're gonna go do a high angle rescue. That that that, that group has never done a high angle rescue together. Uh, Hamp might be fresh out of class, but the team as a whole has never done this kind of work together, is not experienced working together on this. And the majority of the people on this call probably haven't uh, haven't done any of that work at all. So this would be a, a red, you know, for for this team to go out and do a tech rescue call. Now that call may still need to get done, but this team composition isn't suitable for it. So we need to swap some people. Um, another thing that figures into the team is what they're carrying and are they able to carry what they need to do the task. So it's the individual and team equipment. Um, whether the team can bring a litter and the ropes up necessary to uh, to accomplish the task, uh, whether we roll out to the um, if we roll out to a call and we didn't bring one of the JSR vehicles, so we don't have rescue rated uh, ropes and uh, the litter and everything, and we're going to try to do it with cobbled together equipment. That would be a red for this kind of task. So. Just some examples of what the team composition means. Again, distinct from whether everyone is uh, well rested and, and ready for the call. And the final element here um, is the task improv or plant. Uh, do we know what we're getting into or not? This is almost always going to be amber. I mean, we we just 
search and rescue is a uh, generally a dash into the unknown. We, we might have some information, but uh, we don't know exactly where someone is. We don't know exactly how well they've conveyed their location and, and circumstances, uh, either by phone or by runner or by inReach. Um, communication can generally be poor, and we just don't have that great of information. So we send more up the trail than we need usually and turn it around when we don't need it. But um, but a lot of what we do, you can right off the bat say, is it's improvisation. Now, have we done it before in training? That's a good question. Um, again, going back to the tech rescue thing, uh, we have someone uh, over a bank uh, off the bluff at Port Townsend. We've done that before. In training, we've done it in dog rescues. It's, um, it's improv, but we've been there. We've, we've um, got the semblance of a plan together. So it's, it's been thought through. Uh, the final point here is another important consideration not to drop. Have alternatives been considered? For any task that we go out and do, there's always an alternative um, that uh, may not come to mind if the, you know, if the only tool in your toolbox is a ground search and rescue team and some ropes and a litter, then that's all you're going to consider as an alternative. But we have a lot of other tools. Um, for one thing, on our, our most recent call, we used ATVs to get to the, the scene. And um, in the end, mitigated the, re the requirement for a helicopter because we had ATVs. So there's, there are always some alternatives. They may not be good ones, but they're worth considering. All right, so those are the six elements. And I see now on the next slide why I couldn't get the other three things to work. I apologize now for the confusion here. You'll see it when I successfully flip, flip, flip the slides here. Okay, so those were the the elements to discuss, and then number three, four, and five, here's the rest of the process I already talked about. All right, so what happens after this? You proceed with the green elements, you can, you can drop those from further discussion. Um, with uh, amber and red elements, and you'll almost always have some, you could proceed after you mitigate them to green. No further approval necessary. Just just uh, sort through what the issues are that caused safety concerns. Mitigate them to where everyone's comfortable with green on them, and then proceed with the call. Uh, third option here is to proceed with unmitigated elements. But you can only do that with team comfort. So everyone on the team saying, yeah, I know we have some ambers and reds. Um, but I'm comfortable with it. Risk versus reward. We're going to go do this. And we're going to do it safely and with our heads up, um, knowing that there's some risk, but we're going to proceed. And you also need higher level approval. So you have some reds and amber, uh, for reds at least. Uh, if you're un unable to get them down to ambers or greens, then you need to go to whoever gave you the assignment and say, these are our red concerns. The team's still comfortable proceeding but uh, we need your approval to proceed as well. Last uh, possible outcome here is that the task is refused, delayed, reassigned, canceled, or replant. All of those are options. So let's talk about some of those options. So for each of the categories uh, down the left there, the six categories, and there's some ideas for what you can do to change it. I've already talked through a few of these, but uh, supervision, basic ICS things, establish clear chain of command, provide for better communication, like establish a radio, radio relay if we weren't going to be able to talk to, to command on the air. Uh, for assignment complexity, you can change the plan, you can add to the team, you can add equipment, you can add experts in that uh, type of assignment. For the fitness of the team, you can change out people uh, or you can delay for a rest. You can shut down assignment for a while and take a two-hour nap and get back to it. Uh, for the environment, we can't change the weather, but we can um, delay, which uh, we've done before. We can um, reduce the exposure to hazards. We can talk about ways to avoid them, um, or we can talk about doing extra safety precautions, like using PPE in a, in a rockfall area. We'd put on, put on helmets because we're going to be working under a face with loose rock. Uh, so there's always some some way to mitigate environmental hazards not all of them but uh, a majority uh, the team 
if the team again we I talked through some of this you can adjust the team equipment or composition or make the team bigger or smaller to uh, suit the task and then uh, for these cases where it's improv slow down think plan anticipate and uh, talk seriously talk through alternatives include everyone in the in the team that was assigned to it and maybe other people to consider alternatives to um, to what we're rushing into when to refuse an assignment this doesn't happen very often but it should happen when there are uh, risks with uh, with which any of the team is not comfortable so first we try to mitigate the uh, the red and amber elements um, but if there is a, a significantly risky assignment uh, that the team is not comfortable with it should be refused and you should use Sargar to refuse it so you should at, at least if you see four or more red elements that sounds like a lot that's most of your board is red you could go more conservative than that and refuse it if it's three or two but at minimum if it has four or more red elements or any red element that no one on the team is that everyone on the team is not comfortable with then refuse it. You do not need to accept that risk. I went through having it approved by command. Um, so let's see. Refuse assignment with risks with which any team member of the team is not comfortable. Um, only accept risks that are warranted by the gain. So that's the risk versus reward. So um, going to do a search in a um, steep walled canyon you're going to have to rappel into and climb out of uh, when a person has been missing only for a couple hours and we have no indication that they're in that canyon uh, there's maybe little reward there to be gained for a significant amount of risk maybe that's something we delay that's an assignment we delay until uh, we check the easier areas or more safe areas first um, or we get some kind of indication that the person is actually in that area before we take that risk. Only accept risks that you are comfortable with. You meaning each person as well as the, the complete team. And if they're red, only accept risks that have been approved by command. Uh, I've talked about this as a trailhead uh, operation but sargar should be used again in the field when the assignment changes or when the weather changes or when a simple hike up a trail hasty search for a missing party becomes something more dangerous than that the cards should come out again the team leader or any other person on that team should speak up and suggest that we run through green amber red again as a team before we go do this next element that can come up in any number of ways including someone just saying hey i'm not comfortable with this let's take a take a step back and uh reevaluate here real quickly the process as much as i've been talking about it the process actually doesn't take that much time so it's uh like i said field expedient it can be done quite quickly as things change there's the card again i'm not sure why i'm showing you that we'll move on on the back of the card one final note here and we're done with this one the back of the card has some stuff from a mountain rescue association situational awareness class which is a really good class to take you can do that for free on the mra learning website which is um, linked from our facebook page and some other stuff or you can google it um, and these lists which they sourced from the navy i think or modified from a navy list uh are some good reminders so you'll see these on the back of the card and just ask that you review them once in a while they're important but i'm not going to go into them here all right any questions on this before we move on